video is all about uh, my recent character designs and I know a lot of you guys want to know a little bit more about my characters and about their designs and I've been asked a few times to do turnarounds and things and I really wanted to do it for my portfolio as well. I really love doing character turnarounds, I, I like doing character design in general and so I'm going to go through my process of how I develop characters. I'm going to answer some of your questions. I posted on Instagram and Twitter and you can follow me there and I posted um, a little preview of this video and uh, asked for questions in regards to character design and you guys gave me some really great questions and I've picked out some. I've merged a lot together because I got a lot of very similar questions and I didn't manage to get through all of them because I would be here a long time but if you want to see more character design videos please let me know and I, I can record another turnaround. Um, digital art is a little bit more different to watching um, like a painting. I prefer to do painting and traditional art speed paints over digital just because I think they're more visually interesting because you can see it like develop a little more differently and um, it's a different process. I, I actually watch a lot of digital time lapses, but I mean like in terms of the way I do videos, I think my stuff is more visually interesting as like traditional media, but um, yeah, so as you could see at the beginning, I start off with some warm up sketches every time and if you come to my streams, you know that I do warm up sketches before I start working and that is like you wouldn't, you wouldn't exercise before warming up. I, even when I'm practicing my ukulele, I, I have a warm up song and it's, it's giant one <laughs> and um, like everything you, sh you need to warm things up and I don't mean literally. <laughs> um, but yeah, like just letting letting your sort of your rhythm start and what I like to do and I find I get a lot of improvement is gesture drawing as a warm up and I'll put some links in the description and you can go and find yourself some um, really good tools on the internet for gesture drawing. And I'm not going to talk too much about that here because I will mention it in the FAQs. Um, but yeah, so this character is called Masca and she's from my comic Transfer. So if you check the description, I have a link to my comic. It's currently, um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of pre-production work before I really go full on into the full production of it. So I'm doing a lot of character turnarounds and stuff for my portfolio and then working on my characters, uh, on my comic like from that. and. Um, mostly because I'm going to be job hunting again very soon and I need an up-to-date portfolio. <laughs> um, but I do have some pages already uploaded. And if you come to see me at Liverpool Comic Con, I will have some printed versions of that as well. Like special edition ones. And um, I'm thinking of doing like a little sort of little mini art book of transfer and how it's come about so far. But yeah, so this character's Masca, she's one of the main characters. You'll see that she's a little bit different. She's an alien race from a very distant planet. And um, I'm not going to go too much into it yet. <laughs> but yeah, she, um, they, the, their race has four eyes and um, like bat-like ears. And um, I developed her from a character I'd already developed called Otia, who you might have seen in my, some of my videos. And uh, she is also a bat-like character and they're both the same race. And the reason I designed them like that was because I like bats. <laughs> and that was it. I wanted to create like a bat-spider hybrid design. Um, and I just did it randomly. It wasn't for my comic. Zack was my only comic character at that point. And um, I'd been thinking about other characters but nothing else, like no other races whatsoever. And I just designed this back character one day. And if you look in some of my sketchbook tours, you can see the early designs of Otia and where it came about. So yeah, that, that's my story on that. A lot of my stuff is from sudden strikes of inspiration um, and then a lot of research. So I get my little idea in my head and then I go out and I research the hell out of it. And that's what that's what I do with everything, unfortunately. Like, if, if I if I could, if I was still in like uni mode, I would have like massive binders of work. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna answer some questions, and um, 
let's see. Um, I got uh, a few questions about developing a personality for a character first or the other way around and oops okay premiere pro stopped okay so i've set up a little stopwatch thing so i don't go over the length of my time but um anyway so uh, do you find it easy to develop a personality for the character first do you plan out how they look first or their personality etc um i actually do a bit of both um when I'm developing a character so, like, I guess, flagship as Zack or Otia, I have designed them first as um, actual designs, like just scribbles. Um, both of them were just random drawings that I came up with and um, I then put um, personalities to them afterwards. And, um, but with Masca, I knew that Otia needed a best friend. And at first, she, Ot uh, Masca had no name, and she was kind of like this bitchy rich girl. And she, she had a much different personality. And then um, I think I was on the train, and I just started drawing um, a really curly haired version of this race. And I really liked that, and I stuck with that. And, um, but I changed the personality straight away because I didn't feel comfortable with that. And so it can be a blend of both. Like if you need a character, you think, oh, why do I need to fill this gap? Um, does this gap need filling? Do I need to, you know, why can't another character do that? And make sure that there's a lot of negatives as well as positives. You don't, I mean, even if you create a Mary Sue, it doesn't matter. You're creating a character and it's more than can be said for the people who will say like, oh, I, I, I think you've got a Mary Sue or a Gary Stew and who don't go out there and do it themselves and like you just go wild just think is this a character um, am I gonna use it in a long-term project a short-term project nothing at all is it just something I'm gonna draw when I feel like it you know um, but if you are designing for a project then I, I think it's important to sort of make sure you develop both at the same time you can have this idea of how something looks in your head but you can always change it at any point this is your production and if you're working with other people on your production then make sure that they understand where you're going with it as well and how do you avoid same same face same body type syndrome um different facial features um i've put one of the wrong questions in that Erin Nichols was meant to meet in the previous one. <laughs> um, whoops, there's my photoshopping skills. How to diversify, how to keep your characters from being cliche, and how to make them look visually interesting. So, with Masca here, she was actually initially very thin and looked exactly like Otia, but with curly hair. And there was nothing different to her. And I felt like I kept drawing her like that, I was selling prints of her like that, like paintings, and that was how she was and then I thought like no I don't like her like this and I think okay drawing things like Steven Universe and, and the cast of like the cast of Steven Universe has such a diverse body type range and facial type range even for such a simplified cartoon I found that I am now drawing a lot more diverse body types and I wanted to draw a curvy girl um like me I'm curvy and I thought why are all my characters skinny or beefy um because I've got like Zach Zach's quite flat chested flat everywhere she's very willowy and slim and then Otia is a bit curvy but still quite skinny and then Zoe is like brr, like Jasper <laughs> and I was like why is Masca so bland? And I thought her her body type could do with some adjustments. And as soon as I put her as curvy, oh my gosh, did I just feel so much more comfortable with her. So you just gotta keep trying and trying, try different things. Make your character look fat or chubby or curvy or thin or beefy or, you know, add a little foot to them. Try different things with them. It's it's your project at the end of the day. And when you find that one thing that your character matches, then go for it. Um, <clears throat> and different facial features. Um, with my comic, I've tried to keep facial features as similar as possible because I focus a lot on expression. I'm actually tying expression 
to my design more than like different designs like each character does have obviously visually different facial features but um, the way that my characters express themselves is so different to each other so for example Masca here is very bubbly very uh, perky very like woo like sunshine everywhere um, whereas Zach is very stoic so I think it's not just about their facial features but about the expressions that they pull with their facial features so and and the same with Otia like so I'll compare two characters of similar design so Masca and Otia have similar facial features but um, Otia tends to be a bit more dry, a bit more uh, serious, but also gets flustered quite easily. Whereas, like I said, Mask is very happy, very bubbly, and so that is expressed in her facial features. So it's not just about, even if they, they look similar, um, the way that they express and, and you know present themselves is entirely different. So um, don't just diversify your faces, diversify your expressions as well. Like, I'm so into expressions. <laughs> Um, mine's a bit in the long term sense, but what if over time your OC design changes and uh, Rainbow White asks a similar question about looking consistent. So um, it doesn't matter if your OC changes, like you, you will change, your art style will change and you need to be open to that potential change. And um, I always look to Rebecca Sugar when I'm thinking like oh my gosh my style's not consistent blah 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 and I panic about it but there's a um, interview that she did where she said she really likes looking at work where you can see the progression of change and you can see how someone's improved and that makes me really proud to to make sure that my artwork isn't always samey unless you are designing for a solid animation and you are doing hand-drawn animation you you can just go nuts then just 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 go nuts with your design um like i said mask has changed um otty has changed otty used to have six fingers you know and wings and just keep developing it keep drawing your characters get yourself a sketchbook keep drawing and drawing and drawing and if your oc changes over time then you know you change over time too and that's fine and your art style will change over time as well like you're not consistent and your characters don't have to be consistent unless they are for a very specific project such as 2d animation and even then if you look at for example stephen universe i'm gonna keep going back to it because it's such a big influence on me um each episode is boarded by a different team and therefore they have different styles and it it works really well in my opinion so people don't like it i i quite like it so there's inconsistencies in the animation but i i really like it i think it's very different um sorry my phone keeps buzzing but i've got to keep it on because i'm running out of time but yeah so hopefully that was uh, answered um is it wrong to fall in love with a character you design no but you need to also be willing to accept uh, forms of criticism if you want them. You can fall in love with your character, that is absolutely fine. If you want to improve it in a, and like use it in a professional setting or work with others, then you need to be able to accept feedback on it and not take it personally because that person who's given you feedback, if it's good feedback, I know there's people out there who will give bad feedback and it's not nice, but if you, if you give good feedback and you get good feedback, think about it and take it in because they just want you to improve and they want you to be the best you can be. So fall in love with your characters. I'm in love with my characters and I love developing them and I love drawing them and I think it shows because I think you, you get you can get into your characters' minds and stuff. So I'm running out of time. Ah, okay. How do you go about naming your characters? I'll put a link in the description to a post where I wrote about how I developed the names for my characters on my Tumblr. So I hope that explains it more in depth because I don't have much time. <laughs> um, and how do you deal with wanting to change their design design every time you revisit the character? Deal with it, just keep going with it. Design away, you know, like fill your sketchbook with it. It's, it's so great. Okay, last question. Ah, <laughs> how do you determine a character style? I find it hard for what they wear if the appearance gives you an idea of how they act. So for me, I actually tie their style into their personality and it's a little bit of stereotyping but in my case it works but like my styles of my characters kind of 
I don't know, this is a hard question, so I might have to answer this another time because I am out of time now. Damn it. But, um, yeah, so <laughs> thank you for watching this and I will try and do more character design videos and uh, check me out on Tumblr and other places like that and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.